Hey, there's your boy Nate. It's time to get to building. We're back in the garden world, and today we'll be building the paths and garden borders to prepare for future builds. Why, you may ask? I have plans to branch most future builds onto this one world, create one massive garden. So another reason to subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss any updates. Let's get started. So behind me you can see that there is a large area of moss, as well as the zen and oasis gardens from the last few videos. Now if you can't tell already, they're missing something. Two things actually. Firstly, there doesn't seem to be any form of generalized direction a visitor should follow when visiting the garden. This can be solved with a simple footpath. Secondly, there doesn't seem to be any clear division between the gardens of various types. Alright, to begin we'll mark where we will put our footpath. This will be marked using netherrack just to get the general shape down. Now the reason we're using netherrack is because it's a bit of a contrast block compared to it, compared to the moss and such. Now we're going to basically just go ahead and loop it through here. We'll have to knock out some of this gravel, generally just the edge, only to make it to where we can simply go around this. Or we can even just bring it through, so if we see if there's a divider right here, bring it through like this, and eventually we can get to the hasha as you will learn the terms in the last video. So right here, there we go. We'll have to make it about three blocks wide given the path we chose. And then bring it round and as we go up, we'll eventually want to loop it round and follow a similar path. Now the reason we're doing this is a snaking pattern can actually increase the amount of stuff you can do with your garden without having it to lose the space that the viewer may have access to. So once we have this down, we'll just basically show you from above, and there we go. Now that we have that all marked, you can see that it follows this sort of snaking pattern right around here. If you follow this cross here on my screen, you can see that this path will basically wind its way all the way to this point up here. Now, we don't want too much of a contrast, but we still want a solid one. So a good way to do that is look for your palette's main colors. What I'm going to do for this one, what I like a lot, is mixing diorite and calcite. Now, I know Diorite is a very much hated on block. I don't understand why it gets so much hate, but it is still a valid block to use. Additionally, we want to have our slab form so that we can, of course, get the nice, easier steps that aren't going to be as noticed. So there we go. As we go down here, you will see that we can simply just knock out these three and instead just get ourselves a bit of a shape. And once we have that down, we just want to bring it out a little bit into this main open area so that the garden meshes cleanly with the outside surroundings. Now, I was going to show you this general idea for it quick. And so by doing this, we would simply mix in a random pattern of each of the blocks we selected from our palette. The reason we do a random pattern is because we don't want it to look just eerily generated. Like, we want it to look more natural, so to speak, more organic. So, in doing so, we end up with a result similar to this. Now, additionally, you can take this a step further. As you can see, this edge around here where we patterned it everywhere. That's also something you can do. By mixing it in like so, you can actually improve it even more. So let's just add that in. Make sure we alternate between our blocks like usual. And then we can go ahead and throw in our calcite again. With that in note, we can now proceed to our greater completed section for this particular step. 
As you can see, we have finished placing these diorite and calcite blocks in place. You can see the basic layout of the path, and that's where we're going to leave it for now. But now we need to move on to the borders. So before you lay the borders, just like with the paths, you want to have your basic idea of the layout. So we're going to just simply place to down a few things, like just to mark where the borders of things would be. And after we have those in place, we can of course plan around that. So if you can tell right here, we're going to just line that around there so that we have the oasis in the Zen Garden now separated. Additionally, we would continue around this and we would stop at the path. All right, there we go. Now you can see that we have finished our outline and part of the outline process was to mark out different plots we would use for other garden spaces as the videos continue to come out. So we have all these different spaces. I believe we have a total of seven that are available for use right now. These will be used over possibly the next 10 videos because I have other ones I'm gonna mix in. Now, aside from that, we're going to show you how you can go ahead and detail this. So we basically raise it up, but the reason we have these set as is, is because we have to use our slabs. Slabs are your best friend when it comes to detailing once you have the outline down. They allow you to get shape, shape that's not exactly as doable with a full block layout. So you sort of like that, and then as you proceed upward, get another added layer of depth and shape. So like this, if you go ahead and bring that round, now you're going to need to bring everything up a minimum of one half slab, just so you have an idea that it's not gonna fall off the edge when you're on a higher level, whatever it is, uh, tell or whatever, trough, whatever it's called, uh, I have no idea. Terrace, I guess. Maybe it's, maybe it's called a terrace. But basically, as you go around, you would basically just keep placing this, and you would then go ahead and make it a little uneven as you like to your taste. Now, let's go ahead and finish that up. But additionally, we can add in leaves. Now, depending on the part of the garden, now for the Zen Garden, we could go with cherry leaves, which would look pretty good. But we could also do things like jungle, which would fit in the scene too. But personally, I'm just going to go mainly with the flowering azaleas. The reason being, I just like flowering plants in general. It's always the nice tile, even with real world gardens. So we're going to just mix these in, not too much, but not too little either. All right, and there we go. We can now proceed on to just show the finished product. Now, as you can see, we have finished all this area. and We've got all the stuff added to it. We have the borders added. They're all detailed. And this is basically just an example of what you can do with your builds. We added the Sakura leaves for the Zen Garden just to keep to the theme. And then, of course, we added our regular azalea leaves elsewhere. Now, if you enjoyed this tutorial, please make sure to let me know in the comments. Possibly leave a like. Now, I appreciate you guys watching. And uh, we will be trying to put out more videos more frequently. We already have a schedule posted it down in the community tab. If you're wanting to know when the next video will drop, please check there. Anyway... Thank you for watching.